As you are probably aware by now, Commandos is a treasured game of mine. It may not be perfect, but the amount of effort and polish Pyro Studios placed within this game is almost unbelievable. It's extremely refreshing to play this game and relive my childhood even to this day, and knowing that there was finally going to be a HD remaster of this game made my heart race. I glanced at the short trailer and looked at the store page, and there it was. A flipped image of the original Green Beret and a short one minute trailer. I was more than just excited now. But at the time, I really wish I had noticed some of the trailer's weaknesses a lot sooner, like how when the thief is ordered to move somewhere the wrong audio clip played, or how some animations for the commandos were straight up missing. There was a beta for this game that gave you access to every level, including the bonus missions. I played through the first four official missions before the actual game released. I was so happy to play through the beta as I couldn't contain my excitement any longer by that point, and when I did play through those four missions, I was hit with immense disappointment. There were several times where the inventory screen would stay on my screen despite me clicking off or hitting escape. There were times where I wanted to take some pills from a box, and when I used said pills on bottles they often didn't combine for no reason. It was found out that the number of pills being displayed was inaccurate to how many pills were actually in their containers. Pills and other items sometimes would be glued to your inventory, meaning that once you ran out of pills or tried to combine them, they wouldn't leave your bag if you tried to select them again. There were also functions on the keyboard that were no longer usable. Typically, if you press numbers from 1 to 9, you can select a commando that corresponds to that number. By double pressing that numbered key, the camera would snap to wherever the selected unit is. This basically allows you to have two options for selecting commandos. You want to use a commando's abilities off screen so you can potentially use two commandos simultaneously, or do you want to double press to snap to the location instead? With the remaster, the second you double press the numbered key for one commando, the camera won't snap to him. This removes one of your options, and to make matters worse, if your selected commando is indoors, the camera won't snap to his location if your previously selected commando is outdoors, unless the game randomly decides that you can. I like playing this game as fast as possible, so due to this removal of functionality, it actually makes the experience more laborious in my opinion. The beta was woeful and I had hoped to god the full release wasn't going to be as buggy as this, and then, in only a few hours after the beta had ended, the full game finally emerged within my Steam library and I was ready to play. My previous video will provide some context on my overall feelings of this game, but I'm going to assume you've either already played this game's original or this one, so if you haven't seen this linked video or played these games before, I strongly advise that you do. With that cleared up, let's begin. It's extremely difficult to talk about this remaster without addressing the elephant-sized bugs in the room, so here we go. The initial release of this remaster was an absolute hot mess of poor optimization, completely broken AI pathfinding, graphical glitches, and strange gameplay changes that needed patches in order to be fixed. Now, it's important to mention that there have been three major updates along with a few smaller patches that have fixed a lot of the bugs you may see on screen sometimes, but that doesn't change the fact that I had to experience them and oftentimes still have to endure the most painful and game-breaking ones, even after many months of this game's release. I'm going to list a lot of the bugs that still haven't been fixed yet, so you can get a bit of an idea of how horrendous the handling of this game was, so buckle up, this might take a little bit. This video won't be dedicated to these lists, but it is important that I have them. First off, Commandos in 2 and 3 sometimes crawl along the grounds like they're bobbing up and down. This simply means that they are traversing over bumpy or uneven ground and the animation changes to reflect that. It can look a little weird if the ground looks even enough, but here in the remaster, the Commandos bob constantly like the entire ground is riddled with holes. Often, commandos will freeze in their animations. This doesn't cause major issues, but sometimes if two commandos bump into each other, they often freeze and you'll need to order them to move again. The game initially couldn't run at the highest resolution, causing massive display problems for users. 
The lines of sight for enemies would also create massive frame issues upon using the sightline tool to find out where an enemy is looking. Castle Colditz in Paris also have horrible optimization problems. The game struggles to reach 30 frames per second in these levels specifically, whereas the original can maintain a solid 60 in every mission, and even look superior graphically. If an enemy is alerted to your position but doesn't see you, sometimes enemies can just magically know where you are but they don't chase you or shoot you, even though you can be in range of their sight line. In this clip, the enemy cannot chase me, but I'm in their range to fire and they are tracking my movements. I don't really understand this, because I understand in this scenario they can't run to me due to having an obstacle in the way, but they're not firing at me either. Portraits of the commandos are animated, but they constantly bob and up and down at this ridiculous pace. This isn't too serious, but I actually think it's just kind of hilarious. Sometimes the selection window for certain actions won't display in the correct areas, meaning if you want to knock someone out, the icon won't display correctly, making you click a bunch of times on anything but what you want. Sometimes this can lead to your death or mess up your speedrun. Sometimes items like boxes can't be inspected at certain angles, and sometimes no matter the angle, it just won't open. Getting past tanks and LAVs is a lot harder now since if you use the line of sight tool, you'll tank your PC. And because the turrets on LAVs and tanks no longer rotate, you simply have to guess where they are looking, or play at a low frame rate for a while as you attempt to sneak past using the sight tool. There are animations in this game that have simply not been added or forgotten entirely. The Green Beret and Thief sneaking animation is completely gone, along with transitioning portrait animations for the Thief and the Green Beret when they climb on power lines. The Green Beret's animations often freeze or simply forget to transition smoothly, leaving it looking like he snaps his head into position every time he does something new. Commandos do not enter vehicles properly, and even if they do, they'll often float in the air. In Jeeps especially, the Commandos won't even show up inside the car, they just vanish. Sometimes when you reload a save game, the entire level can just break and you'll be lost in a great void. Shark fins in Savo Island have been removed, making it a little harder to anticipate sharks down in the ocean. You can now exploit lines of sight when you want to get into a tank now, as there is no entering animation. The driver and sapper simply morph inside of tanks now. As you can see here, in the original, the snipers can clearly see two of the commandos hopping inside the tank, but in here, they can't. They're just morphing inside the tank, and the snipers obviously can't see them because they're behind it. The screen often tears and reveals different level pieces within others. It's really noticeable and still hasn't been fixed. I think you get the idea now, there's simply too much to cover. I wasn't even able to list half of the bugs still present in the game, and that's just for graphics. Let's move on to some gameplay bugs just to keep things going and because I don't want the entire video to just be a list of bugs that's almost as long as the patch notes. The gameplay bugs are among the worst offenders to this game's quality. It's bad enough that the graphical problems permeate your vision 95% of the time, but the gameplay bugs can lead to severe frustration, at least for me. I began to notice a lot of consistent problems in my playing of all these missions. I would have drag box issues, meaning I couldn't properly select my men when I needed to. I would have constant camera problems, where commandos would phase through buildings or could be selected through them, which really causes problems when you're not trying to select that particular unit. The camera system has been patched, but it's still worthy of a mention due to how much I suffered while trying to manipulate it. The camera system in the original operated simply like this. Hold control, left or right click to rotate the camera, if, and if you're indoors, middle mouse and drag to use the 180 degree camera, which can give you the perfect angle for almost any situation you need. In the HD remaster, initially there was no such command for rotating the 180 degree camera indoors, meaning you had to hold control, and then hold middle mouse, and then flick the mouse while also letting go at the right time. It's kinda like using a touchpad, and considering Calypso Media is planning to release this game on the iOS store, that doesn't surprise me. 
Why this function was the old hotkeys replacement is beyond me. It didn't function well, I couldn't get the appropriate speed I needed to fully rotate the camera, and inching it slightly to the left or right was a gamble in and of itself. Operating the camera never felt like it was in my control. This made a particular hallway in the cruiser in White Death a massive pain in the ass to get through, as that hole is cramped, and constant use of the 180 degree camera is needed in order to navigate it well enough, due to the amount of enemies and doorways it has. It's really hard to navigate using just one angle, as you can't loot every item box and locker with just one viewpoint, nor can you interact with the captain you have to save in that section of the ship at just one angle. The camera problems don't end there though. Initially the camera didn't contain a zoom in or out function, but now it does. The only problem with it is that every time you swap commandos it resets the elevation of the camera, sometimes even swapping the angle entirely which isn't helpful in the slightest. If a commando is close by to one you're swapping it to, it won't change elevation, but it's annoying nonetheless, since the zoomed out camera is really useful and is probably the only improvement the game sports now. Playing the pre-patched version was a nightmare when I played through bonus mission 8 specifically. In this mission you need to destroy several LAVs and tanks with a Tiger. Due to the inability to effectively lock off your tank and lack of controls needed to zoom out, and that you die in one hit, even though it's a Tiger tank, it led to my death via off-screen fire that only served to infuriate me. It was better when zooming was added, but I already finished the mission by the time that patch came out, so it's too little too late at this point. I also have to adore the simple idea that going non-lethal in this game can lead to game crashes. Knocking out certain guards in missions with poor optimization sometimes led to crashes to my desktop. Take a look. This typically happened in Haifong and Colditz. This is completely unacceptable. When you kill enemies, they should stay down on the ground, right? Well, apparently not. If you reload a game, or go into a new building or room and look through a door or window, all the enemies you kill will spring back to life, standing at attention. What's worse is that animations for objects and enemies tend to reset or start when you look or walk through doors. When you set off alarms, patrols will inspect the area that the disturbance was caused in. However, the patrols will simply not move until the player is looking through the door. Meaning, if they were about to enter into the room you're currently in, the patrol could all rush you at once, since when you were looking through the door, that's when they move, and there would be no way to stop it unless you quick saved and looked through the door just to see if there's a glitch patrol in there. In fact, I'm not even sure if it's a glitch at this point, because it happens to me constantly. The AI simply doesn't move or operate properly until you're either seeing or entering the room yourself, which doesn't make any sense since this logic never applied to the original, they move off screen just fine. Enemies would still be able to move despite commandos being rooms away from them, either indoors or out. In my previous recovered video, I mentioned a few bugs in the game that really needed to be addressed in the remaster. This example here shows an enemy not noticing my cigarette pack. Some enemies do not react to them at all, but they will at least display that they notice the packet, but are simply ignoring it because they're not interested. Here, in the original, it's simply not working, and when you are able to get the guard's attention, the wrong unit has the SIGs when you knock him out somehow. In this example, the wrong guard, who isn't even facing the SIGs, turns around and then quickly turns again and notices me. This is also in the original. Basically the game is operating with a bunch of new bugs and glitches, plus the ones we already had in the original game. You are able to recreate bugs within both of these games, including the final mission with this high ranking officer. It's all the same, only with added bugs, what fucking joy. Speaking of weapons, I mentioned earlier that inspecting crates at any angle doesn't work a lot of the time. Well, this also applies to weapons. Rifles are fine, if an enemy is within your sightline you can easily dispatch of an enemy, but when you want to play as Big Boy Beret here with his knife, you're undoubtedly going to run into yet another problem. That being that the knife icon won't change to the attack icon. Even if it does, it's rather hard to make out if it's even moving due to how... tiny... it is. Eh? 
Get it? See what I did there? I cannot tell you the amount of times I've had difficulty knocking out or straight up shanking people in this game. It's never, it never used to be this difficult, but thanks to the mechanic not registering most of the time, it's quite bloody hard to hogtie and hide hostiles now. To be clear, all I mean is that the highlight over enemy simply doesn't display or just displays something either incorrectly or won't activate on the appropriate pixel of the enemies, meaning no matter how many times you select, select to punch or knife someone, you won't be able to until the magical pixie fairy decides that it's time the animation displays. Even levels can be outright broken, not just graphically upon a reload, I mean having the power to completely run over the landmines and be A-OK -okay, as you complete Saving Private Smith in a completely new way that wasn't possible in the original. I'm sure the amount of listings of just what is wrong with this game is boring you, so let's move on to something else. Something that is more humorous than anything else. In the original game, if you picked up an item or interacted with an object, a little notebook would appear on your screen, pausing the game to let you know what it is, what it does, and how it's used. This is a really great feature for new players as it's extremely articulate and provides extensive detail for the multiple items, weapons, and objects you find throughout the game. The better part of this feature, however, is that once you say, pick up a wine bottle, you are given a tutorial, but never again upon picking up another. If you ever need info on an object or weapon, you can simply go to the notebook and see a reminder of what it is and what it does. Sounds perfect! A non-intrusive miniature tutorial that only gets more handy the less it's available. Okay, how did Calypso fuck it up, I hear you scream as my obvious setup begins to reveal itself. Well, Calypso has somehow managed to make tutorials permanent, and also don't give you notebook entries for everything you pick up or interact with. Sure, the entries are still in the book, but how is a new player supposed to know that? Instead, we get these tutorial medals that are sprinkled throughout the game that can teach you about certain mechanics. However, once they are activated, they cannot be removed even if you restart the mission. They are permanent throughout. I find these medals to be intrusive because every time I or other players want to try speedrunning, they are now going to have to put up with the fact that those tutorials are only going to get in their way. More annoyingly, if you aren't into speedrunning every time you simply want to replay a level, say Training Mission 1, you have to activate the medal that teaches you how to knock out opponents in order to get to the first target every single time. What is even more baffling to me is that in Training Mission 2 you're given an entire tutorial dedicated to eliminating enemies through stealth and then repelling a whole wave of German soldiers to then facing off against the tank. By this point, I think I know how to take care of tanks, but oh no, Calypso doesn't trust us to remember that. So just in case you may have forgotten how to destroy a tank, in Mission 10 there's a tutorial medal to remind you how to do that. Mission 10. Mission 10. Gee, I wonder who in our lineup of experienced commandos within this mission, who could possibly have the abilities necessary to dispatch of this troublesome target, huh? Oh boy guys, I am really not sure about this one, I'm having a really hard time figuring this one out. Fucking hell. Also keep in mind that this is the last medal. There are only a few sprinkled throughout Training Mission 1 and 2, and there's one in White Death that teaches you about the cold, but the original teaches you about it much faster when you grab Winter Gear for the first time. Someone at Calypso must have forgotten the level's play order and simply sprinkled these tutorials wherever they wanted, because in Burma, there are these tunnels the Thief and some other commanders can use in order to sneak into the sewer line. Yet, in Saving Private Smith, there's a metal displaying that you can use tunnels. Calypso. I know about the tunnels. Just, just go. Just go away. I have no idea why they even bothered to include these stupid medals in the first place if they weren't even going to let us have the option to remove them. We can disable the quick save reminder but can't disable gameplay interrupting tutorials. Thanks. Thanks a lot. And in addition to saving, although as of a few days ago this has been patched, why were there only three save slots on release? You got three save slots to save your progress manually, and one to quick save and load. When collecting bonus books, it's easier to manually save in separate slots if you're having trouble finding them and may want to come back to it later. However, having three 
save slots really complicates things and it's mostly just another confusing regression of abilities we once had in the original. At the end of missions you also may have noticed that you get a variety of stars for different categories in a criteria. In my last video I detailed what the criteria was and, and how you gain stars for each criteria. And as you score better, the higher your overall rank will increase. You could compare this rank with your friends and even show off those bonus mission collectible stars in a lovely little star case. Only in this game, all of that is gone. Your case, gone. Ranks, gone. The merit system only gives you stars with no purpose to it. No ranks. No progression. Why did you bother scoring players if there's no reason to score them? This just means levels are a breeze as you are no longer punished for going full lethal. The gameplay in Men of Courage may have been easier than the first game, but the scoring system was the counterbalance to that easiness. You wanted a good score? Play quick, but smart. You had to put yourself at constant risk as you non-lethally take out foes and sprint when safe to do so. It was exhilarating stuff, but now it's completely wasted on a system that doesn't even exist now. I guess if you count Steam achievements as the medals, I suppose that can suffice, but it's nothing in comparison to what we used to have. Speaking of the menu, why is the menu reduced to just a mission list now? The original had a mission list that had easily accessible difficulty sliders and codes to input if you didn't want to unlock the missions in a linear fashion. Now if you want to change the difficulty, you have to access a separate menu in the options menu. Why? I know this is a bit of a nitpick, but seriously, why? In addition to that, codes have been removed. There are no rewards for completing the bonus missions, and no more ranks. The personality of this game is slowly being stripped away with every new inspection of its menu, gameplay, and with every patch that's placed upon it. I believe it's time we moved on to graphics and sound now. The original game's graphics in my opinion hold up even in today's standard. I think it's due to the amount of detail that's put into the portraits and 3D models on the ground as well as the environmental design. I'll use the Green Beret as an example. This guy is jacked. Ah, get it? it, it you see what I did there again? <laughs> ah. Puns aside, the amount of detail given to his muscle definition is superb. He's clearly a unique brute in terms of strength in comparison to the others. When the beret approaches enemies, much like the thief, he enters a sneaking animation to warn the player that he knows enemies are nearby. This makes both of those units stand out as their personalities, both through voice and movement, are unique to those units specifically. It's actually quite impressive just how expressive each commando is, and they all have a portrait and funny voice lines to themselves. The graphics of the environment are very detailed too, allowing the player to easily understand what is and isn't accessible both visually and mechanically with the appropriate hotkeys selected. I'm not experienced with graphics, but it's clear as day how much attention to detail was put in to make every single level in this game stand out from one another. In the HD remaster, I wouldn't blame a single person who couldn't tell the difference between the two games. Even I had to double take the graphics the first time I ever saw them. I wasn't exactly sure what was and wasn't improved. Let's pick off the easy targets first. Yes, the portraits and units are clearly different, however, instead of being given the same details as the original, they simply look clean, almost like plastic toy soldiers. They look downright disgusting. Disgusting when you zoom in on them too. They have such a jarring contrast with each other. I don't think it helps that the environment tends to blur the more you zoom in on it too. As many players have pointed out, the environment hasn't changed at all. In fact, it's identical. The water effects on the other hand do look very nice, but other than that, what else is there? And coming back to my Green Beret example, you'll notice that the same amount of effort has not been put into his muscle definition. He just kind of looks like John claude Van Damme, I guess. The UI no longer has this gritty, serious look to it as you use it. It now looks like concept art that someone found in Calypso's office bin. It's actually quite jarring to look at the new Commandos as they crawl and walk along the untouched environment. 
They almost don't fit this world. The environment is imitating realism, while the commandos are literal cartoon characters now. They just don't go together too well in my opinion. All of the sounds from the original game have been thankfully untouched. The original soundtrack is still here, though it awkwardly shuts off if you access the notebook or objective panel. Sound effects from guards and items or really anything randomly don't play at times while making the environment feel a little dead. Calypso have barely touched the graphics and the same amount of effort has been put towards fixing the awkward forever screaming Germans and saving Private Smith's intro. In this cutscene, the commandos are caught and are taken away to be held as prisoners, but before they are taken away, the officers constantly scream at them. It's so hilarious that this was left in, but in, but in the remaster, it's exactly the same. Jetzt bist du fällig. Hey! Halt! Stehen bleiben! Halt! Hey! Halt! Da ist er lang! Halt! Stimmt, die hier da ist er lang! Hey! Stehen bleiben! Keine Bewegung! Halt! Da ist er lang! I think value is mostly determined by each individual as they are the determiner of their own value system. However, that doesn't mean we cannot measure value between certain video games with objectivity, as some games have multiple versions that can be compared and evaluated using certain criteria. I will demonstrate with Commandos 2 how the original is far more valuable than the new edition. Value is tough to determine without a doubt, but this HD remaster is worse than the original. With the original game, you receive 12 main missions along with 10 bonus missions. You receive a reward system that scores you and provides ranks for you if you're playing according to what the score screen evaluates you on, and allows you to also have a bonus mission display case for the stars you earn upon completion. The entire game is fully functional, although there are small bugs within the original, it doesn't permeate the entire game like the remaster does. No doubt those of you who want to experience the game will no doubt be having trouble if they use Windows 10. Well, fear not, as the free mod called HD Project Mod found in the description below allows the game to run at 1920x1080p, and even looks graphically superior to the remaster, aside from those beautiful looking waterfalls. What's even better is that you are given two launches on the Steam version. If you mod the Legacy Launcher by downloading Destination Paris, you will receive 50 plus missions or with new hardcore challenges made by the Commandos community if you really want to test your skills. What's awesome about these two mods is that they are completely free and eliminate the Windows 10 launch problems many players including me were suffering through. I suppose that leads me to ask, what is it that the remaster has that makes it better than the original? It's quite obvious that I'm going to say nothing. This game doesn't have optimized gameplay, no improved graphics, well again aside from the waterfalls, okay? And even if they fix the portrait animations and redesign how the units look, it's not a style I personally like anyway. Although I cannot get it to work for myself and some friends, the original has an LAN co-op feature which allowed players to control different commandos that they chose. It's a game mode I was personally hoping that Calypso and Yippie Entertainment would be able to implement with better ways to connect to friends, as LAN and programs like Hamachi just weren't working for me. Sadly, Calypso advertised the mode up until the game was actually released. This angered fans so much that a petition was made demanding the mode be brought back, but with how the game runs with just one player, I cannot imagine what it would be like to try and run a session with more than two. The game simply isn't optimized for it, so I can understand its removal, but that doesn't make it okay. You can't just advertise a feature up until the game comes out, that's a surefire way to piss off fans, and may come back to bite you when you decide to release a future game or a future Commandos game too. Along with game modes and advertisements, the promise 
of an authentic World War II experience can't exactly be met now, since Calypso decided that censoring all imagery related to the Axis powers of World War II was a great way to push out the game no. even faster so it wouldn't be delayed by laws relating to Nazi imagery in countries like Germany. Uh, hate to break it to you, Calypso, but as much as fans love this game, no one was demanding you have this game out within a year. In fact, if anything, a delay or maybe 10 of them probably would have helped you. Not to mention that Germany has actually lifted a lot of the laws surrounding the use of Nazi imagery in video games, so I'm not really sure what you're talking about there. With all this being said, it's easy to see that banking on the nostalgia of fans like myself was the clear goal here. Although there have been 13 total patches at this time of recording, the game isn't even close to being fixed. The controls are still not the exact same as they used to be, and nothing new has been added aside from the camera elevation system. I find it absolutely hilarious though the that the only amount of effort I have seen from this game is simply censoring the Nazi imagery. But the game is so fucking buggy and unfinished that you can still see half of the censored imagery anyway. Take a look at this. This is the plane in Savo Island. Notice how it's been censored? Well, once you enter the plane and complete the mission, it's all back. And obviously they can't censor the, the pre-rendered cutscenes, so the imagery is still present on the plane anyway. What was the point of making such a big deal about this if you couldn't remove it thanks to the cutscene's inclusion? Being a HD remaster comes with certain expectations. If you're a HD edition like DMC HD, you can get a range of new things like new moves for the characters to use that enhance the gameplay, upscaled resolution and textures that preserve the game life, new modes and new pieces of content. Kingdom Hearts, when it was released as a HD collection, contained lots of Japanese co content that was initially lost, and the beauty about that was the fact that you only charged 40 bucks for it. If you're a HD remaster, that comes with the implication that you've either streamlined or improved the core mechanics of the original that only improves the experience. You're not a remaster by removing game modes and scoring systems with horrendously unoptimized levels that barely run properly at a frame rate higher than 20 frames per second. And keep in mind, Commandos 2 on sale within the Steam store at its lowest is 65 cents. Its original price right now is 5 bucks, with the double pack containing 2 and 3 being $8. Commandos 2 HD Edition is $30. Please let that sink in. $30. For nothing but a regression of mechanics and modes. That's 5 times the price! Oh, and just to rub even more salt on the wound, if you want even less patchwork done on the console version, that's an extra $20 on top of that. I would hope that Calypso has learnt something from this release. That if they decide to release yet another Commandos game in a state comparable to this, then I'm fairly certain no one will be interested in this series again. I myself will not be buying whatever they decide to release next, I'm not even particularly interested in Calypso games anyway. Lest I see proof that it isn't a buggy mess like this latest release, I might pick up another Commandos game, but I highly doubt it. Thank you for listening to me.